Welcome everybody back to the Figure Kit Garage. Brent Krug with another out of the box review. Uh, this one I am really, really excited to do. I've been anxiously awaiting this kit to arrive and today is finally the day. Uh, this kit comes courtesy of Mike Calvert of Typhon Studios and it is the Boris Karloff Jack Pierce Tribute Bust in one quarter scale. Uh, this piece was originally announced back in June during WantaFest. Uh, Mike teased a few photos here and there, uh, little bits and pieces, and then finally uh, unveiled the final piece uh, during the last day. And he announced that this kit would be limited to only 100 ever made. Um, kind of an interesting story behind the kit um, as a lot of you know, back in 2002, uh, a little company called Janus released a two-figure kit sculpted by Thomas Kuntz of Boris Karloff and Jack Pierce, uh, of Karloff sitting in a barber chair being tended to by Jack Pierce, uh, applying the makeup for his role in the 1931 film Frankenstein. This kit has since become um, one of the most sought after Janus kits ever done. I think the only one that could actually surpass the grail status of this one would be the Lon Chaney Senior Man of a Thousand Faces kit. Um, originally that kit sold for $260 and depending on the seller, now goes for several thousand. Uh, it is incredibly rare since Janus has closed their doors and sadly, we will never see that kit ever again. That kit was done in one six scale. This piece is being done, has been done in one quarter scale, sculpted by Jeff Yeager, a man who is extremely familiar to everybody in the figure kit hobby uh, as his likenesses are second to none. A very interesting thing about this piece is it's not so much a tribute to Carlos Frankenstein as it is to the man who really did make the monster and that was Jack Pierce. Jack Pierce um, Born in Greece and immigrated to the United States was the originator of some of the most famous monster makeups in cinema history. He created the makeup for Conrad Veidt in The Man Who Laughs. And if you know that character, that grin that Mr. Veidt sports during that movie wound up becoming the original inspiration for the DC Comics villain, The Joker. Beside, you know, before he ever became a makeup artist, he was an actor, a stuntman, a cinema manager, and an assistant director. He was also an amateur baseball player. Jack Pierce's life was, and still is, unbelievably filled with experiences that can never ever be recreated by anybody. He created the original makeup for Henry Hole in Werewolf of London, which was ultimately scrapped uh, due to the fact that Henry Hole did not want to wear full facial appliances to completely cover his features. So a different makeup was designed by Jack Pierce to fully expose his, uh, his likeness a little bit more. But that makeup would later be used on Lon Chaney Jr. in the 1941 film, The Wolfman. 
And he was a makeup supervisor with Universal Studios for 19 years. And he was employed with them for over 30 years. He created the Claude Rains uh, Phantom of the Opera makeup. He did, of course, the Frankenstein makeup multiple times. He also did Boris, Kar Boris Karloff's unbelievably amazing makeup for the mummy. Not just the bandage mummy, which you see for a very short time on screen, but also for Imhotep when he regenerates. And Karloff has that really unique look throughout the film. He collaborated with Bill Lugosi for the film White Zombie and did so many other films that it's crazy. Um, after he was let go because of Universal and International Pictures being combined, he worked here and there on a lot of other feature films with multiple actors and the last thing that he did was a makeup artist on the television series Mr. Ed from 1961 to 1964. As amazing as his life was, sadly he was let go from Universal with very little fanfare. Um, practically not even a, so much as a thank you for establishing Universal for the films that they did. And he passed away, sadly, on July 19th, 1968 at the age of 79 years old in relative obscurity, which is probably the saddest note to his life and his career that could ever be. But what, and to quote a letter that's contained in this envelope that you see in front of you, to quote Jeff Yeager, where nowadays most makeup artists have the luxury of using silicone makeup appliances and CGI to create monsters and makeups. Jack Pierce did it all with cotton, spirit gum, and not a whole lot else. Pierce was an innovator. He was one of the original innovators, the only other beyond creative individual in the realm of makeup was Lon Chaney Sr. And this kit is definitely a testament to what Pierce created alongside Boris Karloff. Their collaboration on the Frankenstein monster is absolutely amazing. Pierce created the monster and Karloff brought him to life. And this kit is definitely a testament to both actors. And the envelope in front of me contains a whole bunch of extras that Mike sent along with this. One of the other extras I was able to pick up from Mike is this beautiful t-shirt. Karloff Pierce limited edition resin tribute model kit, a Typhon Studios release. I was able to pick up one of those up along with this kit from Mike. A really, really beautiful shirt. And I got to say, Mike went the extra mile to make this whole package complete. I've never, in, in with last month having been my 30th, I guess you could say, anniversary in the figure kit hobby, I've never seen such a complete kit like this before. These extras, and this is K, uh, KP040, this is number 40 out of 100. And I'm going to open this envelope up and we're going to take a look at some of the stuff that this thing came with. This is unbelievably just, it's chock full of extras. 
This is the letter that Jeff Ye that was uh, composed by Jeff Yeager, what Jack Pierce and Boris, Boris Karloff mean to me. J to read this, it says a lot about the amount of personal love, I guess you could say, that Jeff put into this. It really, really does. There was a video of him visiting the uh, the gravesite of Jack Pierce, which was pretty damn impressive and fairly powerful in its own right. So it, when you see this piece, it'll it'll show you exactly how much he put into this. The next piece is a copy of the cover of Universal Weekly from November 21st, 1931. Spotlight on Jack Pierce, the maker of monsters. With an exclusive of Boris Karloff inside the mind of the monster. And just a beautiful black and white photo of Boris Karloff being tended to by Jack Pierce, which is what the Janus kit and this uh, two bus set is based on although not exactly identical from this photo it doesn't need to be it really doesn't you know really really nicely printed uh, good card stock definitely frameable and then we also have a bunch of little other extras certificate of authenticity which is really creative um, I gotta say, sculptor Jeff Yeager and signed by Jeff, one quarter scale, limited edition tribute of 100 pieces, twin bust. You have purchased a Typhon Studios original, Mike Calvert signature at the bottom and the edition number in the bottom right hand corner, done as an old school clapboard, which I think is absolutely incredible. I wound up getting, two, uh, there's two of them included but the other one is not signed or numbered which is okay it doesn't that doesn't bother me at all then a little advertisement for the resin lounge all different characters the invisible man frankenstein the metal luna mutant darth vader freddy mr barlow jason michael myers and the wolf from an American werewolf in London. And with the resin lounge being uh, uh, directly related to uh, Jesse Garcia's uh, Facebook group, I suggest you check it out if you haven't already. It's a good group of people to uh, be involved with. Oops. Try not to spill all this stuff on the floor. There's a lot of stuff in here. And we've got uh, an Aurora styled Typhon Studio sticker, garage kits for everyone. I love that, I think that's so cool. And you know, I believe he also still has uh, t-shirts uh, that have this logo on there. Have to try and pick one of those up. And a sticker with the Karloff Pierce logo very nicely done and all these extras uh the box and everything were done by mike and i really got to hand it to him he did an amazing job on this another smaller sticker Bring that a little bit closer Going out of focus there we go typhon studios business card where thoughts become things. That's a great, great slogan for a kit producer company. Where thoughts become things. There we go. And this is a copy of the tag that is actually on the back of the box itself that it came with. You know, really nice. And Typhon Studios logo on the back. Readjust the light a little bit. There we go. And these last two pieces are 
just, these are just crazy. This is a copy of the Screen Actors Guild card that belonged to Boris Karloff. Which, I was not expecting this in any way, shape, or form. Social Security number, the date, November 21st, 1931. Class A Screen Actors Guild card, 1931-32. This card will not be honored before November 23rd, 1887. Now, how's that for a little bit of Hollywood memorabilia for you? Even though it's not the actual card itself, it's a, an amazing copy. Boris Karloff's signature on the back with his social security number on the bottom. That's just cool. Totally, totally cool. I love it. I was really surprised when I saw this. And then because of Jack Pierce's uh, amateur baseball uh, career, Mike had a Team Monster baseball card made. Uh, Janus Piccola which was Jack Pierce's uh, original name, being from Greece. He changed it later on to Jack P. Pierce. All with a little bio and everything in the back. Became a stuntman when his baseball career ended, being paid $1 per fall. That's just an incredible bonus to put in with something like this and this is something I've never seen before in any kit that's ever been done so my hats off to Mike for throwing all these little options these all these little extras in here um, definitely makes this kit so worth the purchase that I couldn't even begin to say thank you even more You know what, I'm going to go ahead and uh, read uh, this letter that Jeff composed for this. For 53 years, and this is about what Jack Pierce and Boris Karloff mean to me. Jack Pierce. For 53 years I've been obsessed with monsters. From the early days of playing sick in order to stay home. <laughs> and watch The Bride of Frankenstein on TV. And almost getting arrested for lurking around the neighborhood made up as the Wolfman to growing up in a special effects family making monsters my profession and Jack Pierce is responsible for all of it. Today's makeup effects technicians have all sorts of advantages, silicone appliances, airbrush paint, and CGI improvements, but the things that Pierce was able to do with cotton and spirit gum have never been bested, not in 100 years. Now that's an artist. His skill and imagination have not only stood the test of time, but they've inspired countless other artists to create characters that thrill us and define us as a culture. He was a wizard, a real one. There's no doubt about it. Thanks for your magic, Jack. Can't say anything more than that. Boris Karloff. I love Boris Karloff. I spent so many hours with his face and voice in my head that he actually feels like a relative, or at least a trusted friend. I keep working on him just so I have an excuse to watch his movies over and over without appearing weird. Even if you watched them over and over, Jeff, it wouldn't be weird. Karloff was one of the precious few actors to first explore both sides of a so-called monster's coin. The characters he portrayed were people as well as horrors. We understand them and root for them no matter what they do. That was Karloff's special ability. I always try to capture his humanity in my art, not only within the look of his characters, but in the mind as well, right down to the way he would hold his hands or distribute his weight. When I'm creating a piece, I always feel like I don't want to disappoint him. He's my trusted friend, Jeff Yeager. That is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in a kit. A tribute letter done by somebody who has been able to capture the likeness of Boris Karloff as the Frankenstein monster so many times that I can't count them all. It 
stands as a testament to what Jack Pierce and Boris Karloff have done for so many people, not just in the figure kit industry, but in the realm of makeup effects and to inspire and influence monster makers such as Tom Savini and Rick Baker, that says a lot about a guy like Jack Pierce, as well as Boris Karloff. So many actors that have played the Frankenstein monster in most recent years never ever held a candle to the way Karloff played the monster. He could emote through his eyes and through his hands and his body language in such a way that I've never seen anybody able to pull that off, ever. And I'm gonna set these back behind me. Find a safe spot so they don't wind up on the floor. Uh, this kit is uh, 12 pieces and the casting was done by Mike Calvert and Brian Waters. And Mike and Brian, uh, they've known each other for years. They shared the load on the casting duties for this. And before I even pull out the first piece, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is one of the finest casted pieces I've ever seen. This is definitely a, <laughs> this is a grail. Um, you know, it, not everybody's going to be able to have one. Only a hundred of us were able to uh, get on the list. And that list filled up quick by the end of WantaFest. I think I had my name on the list by Saturday afternoon, early Saturday evening. And I think by Sunday, the list was completely full. So we're going to start off with... And the concept and sculpt and execution of this piece is absolutely perfect so we're going to start off with this is the arm of the frankenstein monster as well as another little piece that's included i'm not going to try and uh, partially assemble this um, i do not want this thing falling apart and getting damaged so i'll do the best i can this little resin piece uh, goes on the back of the chair that uh, Karloff is sitting in, and you'll understand why when I uh, just test fit it. But looking at these pieces, the casting is just beautiful. Practically no air bubbles in any way, shape, or form, and the seam line work was already done before this kit was ever shipped. I was really amazed that there was absolutely zero cleanup at all just smooth all the way around no rough spots no hard edges just amazingly cast light off gray colored resin or more like a tan and then we have uh, frankenstein's arm So I just resealed the bag. <laughs> How silly of me. I've got to say, honestly, this is one of Jeff's finest works. Just the attention to detail, the scar around the wrist, all the wrinkles inside the palm of the hand. vein work across the top of the hands this thing is absolutely unbelievable and the fit for the arm into the sleeve of the jacket flawless zero seam work whatsoever just excellent all the way around here so what else we got coming next uh, we have two little pieces uh, that will go along the side of the chair that Karloff is sitting in 
Jaeger did his homework when he uh, created this piece, especially the type of barber chair that was used back in the 1930s. Uh, at that time, and that this is just, I, I am still mesmerized by this kit. Um, I don't know why, but I actually got slightly misty eyed looking at this. It just really, really had an impact um, looking at it. And it still does, just to think about how well this was done. I'm gonna bring out the base. Oops. Now this base, uh, this is probably one of the most creative bases I think I've seen in a long time. Not that most bases aren't creative, but this one just speaks volumes and it's done like the old film canisters from the Eastman Kodak Company. That alone is just simply amazing. And then the pedestal will go right in the center, like so. Sorry about my thumb being in the way. Simply incredible. The concept and the execution on this base alone is worth it, is just mind boggling and it says it all. You can't get any better than that. And we'll bring out the body of Mr. Karloff and this body is heavy. I'm not exactly sure how heavy he is, but he is definitely solid. There's no hollow cast pieces to this at all. Just expertly sculpted in the jacket. The buttonholes on the side, three buttons. The lapels just sculpted really clean. And here we have the barber chair that he sits in. And this is where this will fit into when it's assembled. Just an amazing concept and the way this was done, I don't think you could ask for a better bust of this type of this character, both of these characters, to be executed as. And then the two little indentations here on the side. And these pieces will sit just like so. I wasn't surprised that they didn't include the arms of the ch uh, the uh, barber chair, which I was not disappointed in. I didn't expect it. And there's the other one. And then set Mr. Karloff up there. Try and pull this back a little bit. It's going to be kind of hard because I don't... The arm on this phone holder does not go back as far as I would like. Just really amazing. And then we have the Frankenstein head. And I was taken aback that the head was enclosed in a little, almost like a small gray burlap sack. I was really, really, I was really surprised at that. You know, but it was care, very great care was taken to make sure that this thing arrived in one piece and completely undamaged and once again Jeff Yeager just nails Karloff's likeness in the makeup just really really sets this whole piece off all the scarring the hair Just amazing work all the way around. The casting is gorgeous. All the cleanup work, completely done. There's zero seam line work on this. And it, 
is just mind boggling. But really, really well executed. Sets right into the head, into the neck. Get a little bit better light on these on this guy. I like the way that shadow looks on him. And then his right arm. Very minimal on the putty work. Very, very minimal. Not to be drilled and pinned to secure it, which I do not have a problem with, but that Karloff likeness is just incredible. And then we have these pieces here, and this is Jack Pierce's left arm and the left sleeve of his coat. I'm going to turn this camera downwards. And once again, skin executed beautifully. All the wrinkles, the vein work. Just flawlessly cast and as well as sculpted. My hats off to Jeff Yeager, Mike Calvert, and Brian Waters for everything that they did on this. And then the sleeve of Mr. Pierce's coat. Pushed up above his elbow, wrinkles done, captured just beautifully. And then his left arm will sit in there like so. And minor adjustment on the little peg right there, but not too much. But the fit is practically flawless. Excuse me. And then the final piece to this is none other than the monster maker himself, Mr. Jack Pierce. This is an incredible likeness. I think this is only the third kit that has ever been done where Jack Pierce has been featured. Apart from the Jan original Janus kit, uh, there was a kit that was produced years ago of Jack Pierce uh, applying makeup to Lon Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman. And I believe that is the only other... Uh, actually, I stand corrected. I believe there was also a, a tribute done by Blackheart Models. Uh, the Tribute Bus series uh, did one of Jack Pierce with the depiction of all the characters that he created in his mind and with his hands. But this is just unbelievable little pencil thin mustache just nicely sculpted no detail was overlooked at all and the way that this piece is going to be displayed I'm going to turn this camera upwards a little bit more is with the indentation, Mr. Pierce is going to sit above and behind Mr. Karloff, like so. And the concept of that is beautiful. It's like a buddy-buddy picture, almost, of the two of these guys together. the monster and the man who actually created him. I don't think there could be another bust and that could ever compare to this. I really don't. The little shelf will actually sit underneath Mr. Pierce like that. 
reinforcing that so he can sit up there. I will wind up drilling and pinning uh, piers to the back of the chair, but for that kind of reinforcement for him to sit up there like that is perfect. We'll definitely be using my steel reinforced epoxy to glue this piece in, but the fit on his left arm little bit of putty work but nothing that needs to be so outstanding that you'd have to do any re-sculpting at all uh, this kit um, sold for it was 194 great british pounds which the final price was about 255 dollars um, for those of us that were fortunate enough to get in on this, um, this is definitely a grail in and of itself. This kit, as I said, does not ever overshadow what the Janus kit did back in the day this stands by itself in every single way it doesn't overshadow it but it stands on its own and i can see that this will become one that a lot of people will want later on down the road but sadly there's only a hundred of them out there in the world and this is one of them a very special thanks to mr mike calvert of Typhon Studios for the unbelievable customer service that he provided, uh, the communication uh, throughout the process of sending the final payment to him, uh, letting me know that it had been shipped, sending me the tracking number, making sure that I was 100% satisfied with this purchase which i am over the moon with this purchase i could not be happier so mike thank you very much uh very special thanks to brian waters who shared the casting duties uh with mike on this as he does with uh, all the other pieces that typhon studios uh produces and definitely uh a very big thank you to jeff yeager for putting a lot of heart into this and you can tell that he did this is so worth the price of admission it's not even funny but most of all thank you to boris karloff and jack pierce for creating these characters and bringing them to life That is it for this episode of the Figure Kit Garage. Stay healthy, stay safe, build a kit.